Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt, and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And first of all, happy Lumberjack Day. Today being Sunday, September 26th, we're celebrating Lumberjacks. And while I was doing some research, there's other days in, in the calendar that Lumberjacks are celebrated as well. But for today, we will celebrate Lumberjack Day today. This story is called... The Lumberjack's Beard by Duncan Beatty. And this story was copyrighted in 2017. Here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Big Jim Hickory was a lumberjack. He lived by the forest in a little log cabin. He had burly shoulders and a big, bristly beard. Every morning, every morning, he did limbering up exercises. It's very important to limber up if you are a lumberjack. And after a hearty breakfast, it looks like a lumberjack breakfast, of pancakes and maple syrup, Jim slung his trusty axe over his burly shoulder and headed out into the forest. Chop, choppity chop, went Jim's axe. Timber, echoing through the valley as he felled tree after tree after tree. After a long day of swinging, whacking, cleaving, and hacking, Jim headed back to his cabin. That evening, when he was just about to go to bed, he heard a peck, peckety peck at the door. Jim looked down to see a small and very angry bird I had just built a new nest in my tree, shrieked the bird, and you chopped it down. Jim scratched his chin, then he had an idea. I suppose you could move into my beard, he said. Very well then, said the bird, and in it flew. The next morning... Jim woke up earlier than usual due to the birds chirping at the crack of dawn. He did his limbering up exercises, got dressed, and ate his breakfast with a little help from that new tenant in his beard. Jim's next job was to strip all the branches and leaves from the tree trunks and burn them in a big bonfire. After a long day of chopping, snapping, burning, and crackling, Jim trudged back to his cabin for a well-earned rest. No sooner had he put away his axe than he heard a noise at the door. Scratch, scratchity, scratch. He looked down to see a very angry porcupine. I needed those leaves and pine needles to make a cozy shelter, but you'd burn them. Where am I going to live now? Snapped the porcupine. Jim thought and scratched his chin. Well, he said, I suppose you could move into my beard. He bent down and the porcupine crawled in. The next morning, Jim woke even earlier and attempted to do his limbering up exercises. He looked in the mirror and scratched his chin. Yow! He got porcupine quills in his fingers. He tried to eat breakfast, but lost his appetite when he noticed bird poop on his shirt. Jim's job that day was to float all the tree trunks down the river to the lumber yard. One by one, he rolled the logs into the fast flowing water. After a hard day of lugging, splashing, rolling, and crashing,
Jim staggered back to his cabin. Thwump, thump, thump went his door. He looked down to see a very angry beaver on his doorstep. I spent all day building my dam and it got smashed to bits by those logs you threw in the river, it snarled. Without a word, Jim picked up the beaver and put it in his beard. Between the birds chirping, the porcupines prickling, and the beavers thumping, Jim didn't get much sleep that night. He was too tired to do his limbering up exercises in the morning, and the beaver's thumping tail knocked his pancakes all over the floor. That's it, cried Jim. I can't take it any more. You all have to move out today. But where will we live, cried the animals. As Jim scratched his chin, he had a brilliant idea. He went into his bathroom, took out a razor, and began to shave off his big, bristly beard. Then, oh, look at that pile. Then he took the hair and piled it on his porch, and the bird and the porcupine and the beaver all moved into their big, bristly new den. That night, Jim slept better than he had in a long time. He woke up and did some particularly vigorous limbering up exercises and put on a fresh plaid shirt. Then he made an enormous tower of pancakes and maple syrup. Jim looked out the window at the bare ground where the forest used to be and scratched his now stubbly chin. Then he had another brilliant idea. Jim took his shovel and dug hole after hole after hole after hole. And planted tree after tree after tree. Jim's beard grew back over time. The trees took quite a bit longer. But it was worth the wait. And you can see Jim there reading to the animals a book on planting trees. The end. That was a good story. And that's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.